What's going on? We back. Motor City Sports Talk. Talking some Jorge Linares and some Vasali Lomachenko talk. You know, we back with that real trail boxing talk. It was brought to my attention from my Brooklyn brother um, that, um, you know, this fight ain't selling too good, man. I went to go look on, uh, you know, Ticketmaster and Vivid Seats. And, um, yeah, it's a ton of tickets left for Lomachenko Linares. For some reason, they put this fight in the big uh, Madison, the, the big room in the uh, Madison Square Garden. Um, if you ever been there before, they got a theater room and they got the big room where the Knicks and shit play at. Um, you know, I believe this fight should have been the small, the, the theater room. No, no offense to, to the fighters. It's a simple fact that you know Lenares ain't a pull on the East Coast. I don't believe he's fought East before, and if he has, it hasn't been in a prominent fight because he ain't been in a lot of prominent top fights. Um, but they chose to think this fight was bigger than what it was and put it into the big room in the Master Square Garden. And the tickets are flopping. What I understand, a lot of the tickets that, that flop from top rank when they do it in New York, um, you know, and they flop. You know, you can get tickets you, as close as uh, for $18, really, really close from what I understand. And the ticket sales drop because nobody's buying the tickets. But this fight is important because the Boxers Riders Association is having a convention May 12th in New York City, and that's why uh, Bob fought so hard to get Lenares. I'm going to get Lenares to fight Lomachenko on this day on ESPN. Um, but, yeah, I'm not surprised. I mean, they're not household names. I'm sorry. You know, some idiots have, you know, uh, Lenares in their top 10 pound for pound, which is stupid as fuck because he's never had a top win. You know, they want to say, oh, he holds a belt. A belt really don't they don't move me in, the, in, the, in this world. You know, holding titles don't move, especially at lightweight. Ain't shit at lightweight. I mean, you ain't got to do shit that lightweight to get a title, you know, before Mikey came back. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, they trying to sell this as a as a tough, as a big, huge fight. And it's not that, man. This should have been in the theater room, you know. And at the end of the day, they're going to start dropping off ticket prices. So if you're going to be in a New York area, be prepared. <laughs> be prepared for a ticket drop and go see Lenars and Lomachenko, which is going to be a solid fight. But like I said, man, they, they you know, they want to talk about... You know, they trying to put all their money into Lomachenko. He ain't pulling. You know, I'm trying to tell guys. Tank is a bigger pull on the east, on the east, and that's because Tank is from this country, and Baltimore is fucking with him. He had the whole lower bow for that uh, Clayler fight. Man, that Jose Clayler fight, Adrian Brunner, Vargas card. I was there. He had the whole lower bow. The whole Baltimore came out and seen him. You think about Lomachenko was his worlds away, you know, and I'm pretty sure if he fought – you know, where he from in the Ukraine, he, I mean, you know, wherever he from, from the Ukraine, I think he from, he'll kill it. Even in the UK, he'll kill it, you know. But this is the market they're trying to open. This is the A-side market in, in boxing, you know. And I don't think it's a smart choice. Now, if it was Mikey Garcia, yeah, I think they could have did close to, to Broner S numbers when that fight come up. If they choose to make that fight. But Lenares, he ain't that poor, man. He ain't going to pull for you. Him and Rigondeaux pulled. You know, because that was a fight that people wanted to see. Nobody had ever seen four gold medals in a professional boxing ring, you know. Just off of that and the build-up and the trash talk Rick and Dial made, you know, you guys might not consider Rick and Dial a top fighter, you know, but at the end of the day, he was. You know, he moved up two-way classes to be great and get a check, and not only did he get a check, he got a check in his ass. You know, it was just too big. And what's so funny you know, Lomachenko wants to put a stipe in the contract that says if a fighter quits, they no longer get paid. They don't get paid if they quit versus him. And a lot of people say that when fighters quit versus him, the string of fighters is very fishy. You know, it's very fishy that guys just all of, all of, all of a sudden, you know, quit under the pressure of Lomachenko. When he don't hit that hard, he don't be really offensive blazing on guys. A lot of people quit from the frustration. And I'm going to leave y'all with this with people that's talking about how fishy that could be. I remember Sergio Mora telling, talking about Triple G. He said, "If you know, if I can hit you, I'm not afraid of you," and that's a very, very valid statement right there. And that holds true with Lomachenko. A lot of guys can't hit Lomachenko because how he changes ranges, left to right and forward and back. And when you get frustrated, when you can't hit a guy and a guy just peppering you and he frustrating you, like Mora said, "If I can hit you, I'm not afraid of you." Well, you can't hit him, so. When you can't hit somebody that's tagging you back, it might not be the strongest punches in the world, but they tagging you and they pepping you, frustrating you. It creates doubt and it creates quitting guys. And if it's a little quitting, some of these guys, these guys will quit easy and go cast a check after the fight. 
So that that's something that whole weight uh, weight. But now he's moving up in weight. He's gonna have some stiffer competition. And that's why I said when he continues to move can move up in weight higher before he go, that's gonna prove how great Lomachenko is. You know, he able to move up and, and his style is able to continue to dominate top opponents at thirty five and forty and possibly one forty seven in the far future. You know, you ain't going to have no other choice but to get this guy a crown and give him his Hall of Fame credentials and his jacket and all that shit in the near future. And I rock with him, though, but tickets ain't selling. That's all I had to say. We gone.